another DJ Brew 2 beer review. Well, we've got a super fresh beer for you today. We've got a collab beer for you today and a brewed once only beer for you today. And from whom do we have said beer? It's from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery out of Milton, Delaware, US of A. Yay, yay. And it's there. Beer Thousand, also known as B Thousand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, why is it known as B Thousand? Well, because this beer is a collab beer with. Guide by Voices, a band that was really popular in the 1990s. I really dug them. And their 1994 release was called B-1000. This is considered a watermark, you know, album of the 1990s. And it's the 20th anniversary of said album. 1994, 2014, you know what I'm saying. This beer just came out. Right now it's about two weeks old. Actually, just under two weeks old. Because the bottle date is correctly displayed on the bottle in yellow ink. Easy to read. You rock dogfish head in that respect. Now, this beer is a 10% ABV beer. And it clocks in at 31 IBUs. Now, you know, they're... The sites are saying this is an Imperial Pilsner, but really I think it's an IPL because it's got a boatload of freaking hops in it. Now, they're calling this Beer Thousand, and how have they made Beer Thousand? They've got 10% ABV, they've got 10 types of hops, and 10 types of malts. What are the hops in this beer? Well, they're Warrior, CTZ, Simcoe, Cluster, Galena, Galaxy, Willamette, Centennial, Cascade and Vanguard. That's a lot of freaking hops. It reminds me of kind of Ruin 10 and that big sort of cornucopia of hops. Now, what do they have in it for malt? They've got two row pale, six row pale, corn, rice, wheat. You see, I'm counting off. I'm trying to remember here. We've got dark Munich, carapils, dark caramel, light caramel, and flake barley. That's a lot of freaking ingredients. We've got 20 ingredients in this beer plus water. So I guess that makes 21 or 22 with the yeast. Anyways, now. This beer is a lager. Why? Because I watched Sam Calagione's video and he said uh, Guy by Voices drank a boatload of lager. Probably adjunct crap lager back in the day when they were making their album B-1000. So, enough of my flapping my gums. I'm going to get the top popped on this and see what's up with this new IPL from Dogfish Head. Boom. Lovely Dogfish Head obsessively collectible crown. I've got a little snifter today because you know what? This is all about Imperial. I could pour it in a Pilsner glass, but I don't really like this sensory experience out of uh, Pilsner glasses very much. So, here we go. Look at that. Uber clear. Now, as you know, Dogfish Head doesn't make many lagers, but this is one and I figured I'd try it because I haven't really, I don't remember ever having a lager from Dogfish Head in my beer memory. I may have, but yeah, I'm a beer drinker. So, what do we got appearance-wise? We got a gorgeous eggshell, about finger and three-quarters heads, kind of soap subsidy at the top, really tight bubbles around the side, actively streaming bubbles from the bottom, and it's a beautiful golden amber, kind of like mm, light honey, not clover honey, but maybe light honey colored. Very nice looking beer in the glass. Lots of fizzy bubbles coming up. I'm interested to see how this beer compares to other IPLs that I've had, especially the ones from Jack's Abbey, which I really dug, and the one from Green Flash, where I can smell the hops walking off this bad boy, but the one from Green Flash, I really like that one too, the one they did with Devil's Backbone in the can there. So, let's get the aroma on it. I was digressing. You're not surprised. Let's get a news on it. Well, up front and forward is hops. Pine, grassiness, citrus, herbaceous, maybe even like a bit of mint smell in there. You can smell that it's a lager. You get that, like, lager yeast aroma. It's not cardboard or metallic or anything, but there's some of those lager yeast esters that are thrown. A bit of um, breadiness in there as well. Sweetness in the background, but the hops are up in the forefront. When you've got ten different hops in the beer, but it's not it's not a real bitter one, but you've got ten different hops in the beer, it's going to show up, but it's grassy, herbaceous, a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of pine, a little bit of citrus mixed in with that sort of grainy kind of sweet malt aroma. Maybe that's coming from the corn. I'm not sure. It doesn't smell like an adjunct lager or anything like that, but you can tell it's a lager. IPLs tend to smell like that. That's enough sniffing. Time to get to drinking. Cheers. Wow, nice. Wow. Wow, that's cool. Right up in front, you get this like sort of sweetness, like lagery sort of sweetness from the malt. Then in the middle of your tongue is when the hops come on. I'm getting almost like this pear taste in my mouth. And on the sides of my tongue is where I'm getting the bitterness. And sort of like a, a lemony bite of the bitterness. Very crisp, very clean. There was no alcohol in the aroma. There's only a tiny, tiny bit of alcohol in the taste. It's really well played. The back end, like like these IPLs and Imperial Pilsners and Loggers are, 
It's very crisp. The bitterness is spot on in this beer. There's a good bit of sweetness in it, but it's balanced off by the bitterness that's in there from the hops. I'm glad I've got this so fresh to really see what they, they intended it to be fresh. But man, easy drinking. You get warming in the chest, but hell, it's a 10% beer. You're going to get that. Wow. Very clean beer. Very smooth, easy to drink. Dangerous beer. You can sit with a four-pack of these, what they sell it in, four-packs. I think I got some 750s, and you can buy it with an album and stuff. But really clean, easy to drink, crisp beer. If you drank a, an ocean of this while you were making some music, you would probably forget yourself. Look at that, guys. Really awesome glass lacing. Not, su not a surprise. Dogfish Head makes quality beer. Wow. That's a really cool lager. I'm, I'm really happy to see these lagers that are more extreme coming out and people taking more risk and putting more ingredients into them. There was that first wave of them where you had some Imperial Pilsners, then it kind of like died down. And breweries like Jack's Abbey has brought that back, I think, in the, the popularity of these bigger sort of lagers that have more flavor and kick to them. The cool thing about this beer and the other IPLs, Imperial Pilsners, or whatever it is, they give you a lot of flavor in the front, but on the back end, man, that finish is so clean, it's gone, and it brings you back in for more. Really tasty. I'm, I'm digging this beer. So, what do we grade a beer like this? Rate beer is given a 39. Are you surprised? It's not an ale. It's not fitting the fanboy base. It's not a hipster beer. I don't know. Maybe it is, but you know what? 39 is complete and utter horseshit and they should be embarrassed that that's the grade that it's saying. Beer Advocate's giving it an 87, which is pretty much a B plus. I can see people grading it that. If you don't have a lot more experience drinking these Imperial, you know, like IPLs and Imperial Pilsners, it may not be what you expect. It's not as heavy a beer, and the flavors don't lay heavily on your palate like, you know, IPA does, you know, or, a, you know, a bigger ale with it that has big hoppiness in it. It seems almost like with these Imperial Pilsners and Lagers and IPLs that... That hoppiness and everything is kind of carried away by the carbonation and the cleaner yeast and the filtered nature of these beers. But I'm really digging this beer. I'm giving it a, I'm going to give it an A, a 95. It's everything that I expected out of it. It's got some really cool flavors. I almost got, like I said, mentioned in the aroma, I got like this minty sort of herbal aftertaste, which is really freaking nice. But I would... I'd buy a four-pack of this. I bought a single because I didn't know what I was getting into, but I might go buy a four-pack of this because... It's a tasty-ass beer, and it's one of the best collab beers that I've had from uh, Dogfish Head and a lot of other breweries for a long time. So, have you had this beer? If you have, if you have, let me know. I don't know everything. I'd like to hear your opinion, too. That quid pro quo rocks. Also, what rocks is when you think globally, drink locally. I'm drinking kind of locally. I'm supporting Dogfish Head. They're really close to our beach house, you know, that my family's got. So, that's kind of local for DJ today. So... When you keep when you do that, you keep the craft beer movement growing and you get more diversity and cool ass collab beers like this. So to the next DJ's brew tube, thanks a million to each and every one of you for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and hit that like button because that and beer puts my happy face on. So till then, I got another bunch nothing but a bunch of beer thousand drinking love for you. And you know what's coming, that's right. A big ass, a big down.